Okay. Uh, Luando Franklin is my name. I'm the lead tutor and chief executive officer at FCL Accountant Station Center. I have vast experience in lecturing. And that is over 20 years of lecturing. I welcome you to this presentation on our FCL Accountant Station Center YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at financial instruments, which is relevant to financial reporting under SEC and also under strategic business reporting under SEC and also under CA Zika 2.1. We'll be focusing on the definition of financial instrument, very important. The compound or hybrid financial instrument in the books of the issuer. We'll also look at the separation of the compound financial instrument into its components, that the debt component and the equity component. We also look at the remeasurement of the debt component, which is based on the amortized costs. So those will be the outline content that we'll be looking at today. So I can get started with the definition of financial instrument according to IS-32. The financial instrument is a contract that gives rise to both financial asset in the books of one entity and financial liability or equity instrument in the books of another entity. I can give quickly some few examples of financial assets. Financial assets include one, the cash and bank, receivables, and loans. When we talk about loans, this is in the books of the order. The one who has provided loans in his books, that's a financial asset. Basically, those are a few examples. We can also look at few examples on financial liability. The examples include the trade payables, the loans in the books of the issuer is the one getting the loans. So those basically are examples of financial liability. So in today's video, the focus is on the, on the compound or hybrid financial instruments in the books of the issuer. An example of such is a convertible on stock because it can be separated into the debt component and the equity. Now, I want to explain how the separation is done. The debt component is a sum of the present value of the coupon interest and the principal. This will be discounted using the effective interest. The effective interest is the interest rate of similar loans, but without the conversion rights. That's very important. That's the discounting uh, uh, rate that will be used. 
the total will give us the debt component and the residue will be the equity option. Debt component is remeasured at amortized costs, which I'm going to demonstrate. Equity option is not remeasured. It is the residue as per conceptual framework. So now we are going to look at a question here. We have a question on the screen that I'm sharing. We have an 8% million convertible loan note was acquired on 1 April 20X5 at par. Interest is payable in arrears on 31st March each year. The loan note is redeemable at par on 31st March 20X6 or convertible into equity shares at the option of the loan note order on the basis of 30 shares for each $100 of loan. A similar instrument without conversion option would have an interest rate of 10% per annum. So that would be the effective interest rate to be used as the discount factor. And here we are given the two interest rates. For the purpose of discounting, we always use the effective interest. Question, what will be credited to equity on 1 April 20X5 in respect of the financial instrument? So, but we also work out the debt component and the amortized. So now, the first thing that you need to do is to find out what was the coupon interest, number one, coupon interest. The coupon interest here, we have coupon interest that will be 30 million. You can work with 1,000, 30,000 multiplied by 8%. So this will give us $2,400. So we can determine the debt component. The debt component is as follows. The debt component is as follows. So we have the year. We have the cash flows. We have the discount factor, which is the effective interest at 10%. We have the present value. So year one, year one, the cash flow there is two four. Year two, the cash flow there is also two four, it's constant. In year three, which is the final year, we have two components the coupon interest of 2,400 plus the principal of 30,000. So it will be 32, these are in thousands, 32,400. Discounting in year one, the discount factor 10% is 0 0.1. There is 0 point, we are given 0 0.83. And there is 0 0.75. So there it will be 2184. If you multiply, there it will be 1992. There it will be 24300. So we said the debt component is the sum of present value. So what will be the sum? 28, 476. This is the debt component. Equity option is the residue. Equity option is the residue. What will be the residue because the convertible on stock is 30 million, which is 30,000. 
So the residue here is the difference between the debt component and the total value of the convertible on stock. So there we have 1,524. That's the difference, which is the equity option. If we check here, the equity option, the answer is there. That's what the examiner was asking for. Now we can go further to determine the remeasurement of the debt component. We say the debt component is remeasured at amortized cost, which is the debt component plus the effective interest less the coupon interest already paid. Equity option is not remeasured. The way you calculate it, that's how it will be recognized in the financial, in the statement of financial position under uh, equity. So now let's go to measurement of debt component. The debt component here, remeasurement, it is at amortized cost. amortized cost. The amortized cost, we have the debt component. The debt component there, we said it was 28, 476. Effective interest, which is 10%. Effective interest is 10%. 10% of that will be 28. 28, 4, 8. Less coupon interest. Coupon interest does not change. The coupon interest here is 2,400 does not change. So this will be 2,4. This has already been paid, you remove it. The amortized cost here will be 28,924. This is the amount that will be recognized in the statement of financial position as a non-current liability. The effective interest is recognized in the P and L as a finance cost. So that's how you account for the compound financial instruments in the books of the issuer. So uh, look out for the next video where we we'll continue uh, looking at the financial assets in the books of the order. And that will be very important for you to be able to follow how these are accounted for. For today, we can end here. Thank you for viewing this uh, video.